in integrations, uh, if you have worked on an integration, you will be passing parameters for our integration. Like with the when you are invoking an integration, it is a parameter driven. You need to pass one parameter to drive it, or maybe multiple parameters. Or if you want to give this integration to some other person, you will create the integration as a REST integration, and you provide the parameters. Once they provide the parameters, based on the parameters, it's going to run. Okay. So that type of integrations are called app-driven integrations or parameterized. Explain that again. I think we have lost you for for for. Okay. So let's take an example of a ESS job. When you are submitting a scheduled job or in EBS a concurrent program, you have parameters. Remember? Yes. As soon as you cl click on submit, we have parameters. You select the parameters and then you submit. Okay, that kind of integration we are building here. For an integration with parameters, it is called app driven. You clear with this app driven? Yes. So, so for this integration pattern to work, there has to be some parameters values which has to be given to initiate yes. this integration to happen. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And and these parameters could be exposed to the end users as well as for the technical users based on. Yes. So, yes. Okay. And the schedule one is without parameters. These are especially used for scheduling. Once you build the integration, you just schedule it, or you can just submit it. There won't be any parameters, so it will just, as based on the schedule, it will just start running. I'm a little confused there, like you know, um, you know, with parameter and without parameter. So what is that? Because all programs we run um, schedule it. Sometimes most of those are having a parameter. I don't see any without parameter. So what is the business scenario you are talking about here? Just to difference, differentiate now, those two. Let's take uh, we have SAP system, and SAP wants to call this integration. Okay. So they are going to trigger our integration. It's not a submit now. The SAP system will trigger now, and they can trigger with the parameter. Whereas the scheduled orchestration, it is it cannot be triggered. It's just a submit now, or it is scheduled. No, but even in the schedule, it will take. That means we are not giving anything manually. But still, that uh, program will take the data from this side based on some event or something, and it will push, right? Yes, yes. I think in this case, in this case, it could be a FTP read the file the schedule because you don't need a parameter read the file from a particular location. So that could no. be. Uh, this is only the starting point. The difference is only the starting point. Inside the integration, you can do all the operations. Both are same. So which of this would be the event driven? Let's say if I have an integration of, let's say if I'll pick an example, I have infusion system yeah, whenever an invo invoice has been created, then this integration should trigger. So which would that be? Would that be app driven? App driven. App driven. So for other system to invoke this, it's going to send a payload. Okay. So that payload is nothing but the input data. These are like parameters you create this. So the question you ask is a correct example for this. When you see an event based, for example, let's say order is created, and as soon as the order is created, you want the integration to be triggered, a event based trigger. So you create this integration, app driven integration, and the input is the output of that event. Mm -hmm. No, it's more of a database event you are talking about. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. The other systems will trigger this integration. So in that case, we go for app-driven integrations. If you are building a scheduled integrations, like a day-to-day, -day, a integration keeps on running, then we go for scheduled orchestrations. There won't but be any parameters. Yeah. Yeah, please. Okay. So, but even in the case of why will not scheduled be orchestration, we will be we, they will be sending us a payload, right? Let's say if it is an inbound. So would there be a payload? Because I understand that the payload we are calling it as a parameters or something. So, so in a schedule, would there be a, any kind of a payload? Payload can be there, but we need to write it for a file, or we will have an adapter 
which will read that payload, which will receive that payload. It, it won't get triggered. Okay, this is once you schedule it, based on the schedule, it will start running. Inside that operations are like different watched operations. Okay, in a FTP folder there is a file. Go read that file. Do these operations. Or there is a location where you get payload. Call that service. Get the payload and do these operations. The inside operations can be done in both. Only thing is that starting point. How they both going to start? That so is the why can't why can't schedule orchestration also have parameters? Like I don't understand that. Exactly. So even we had the same yeah. question. So we went with yeah, Oracle and we check with them. Yeah. Like suppose you want a list of employees every day uh, who have joined on that day. It's a very simple thing. Okay. Yes. Suppose and then so the parameter is this date. So there is a parameter. Yeah, so in that case, we can build an app-driven integration. If you have the and, parameter, and suppose if you re require it every day, then we can schedule that app-driven orchestration. Yes, we can schedule that app-driven orchestration. For that, we'll create it as a connection, and we're going to schedule it again. So I understand. So both are very similar. Yes. But schedule only will have no ones. We are sure that, like the example that you gave, go read this file and call this service. Yes. That's it. Go read this file, call this service. Just yes. do this. So then it will yes. be scheduled. Yes. App driven is like normal mass employee loading. Suppose a file, uh, there is a CSV file, and from and from there data has to go into Fusion. Then what will we write? So the set of operations we are talking, which can be inside both the integrations. Okay. For example, even if there is a file, go read that file. That can be written inside this app driven also. Okay. Thing is that the input, when you start the integration, how it is going to get started? How we are going to start the integration? Now SAP wants to start our integration. Okay. They have a. Pa they need to send a set of parameters to. For example, okay. we we'll create a app driven integration with an ID. Now SAP needs to trigger it. From a, it's a different system, right? SAP. We will give this web service to them. They will trigger this. They will. They can call it as a SOAP service or a REST service, and based on that, they will pass the parameters and they will trigger it. Then our integration will get triggered and it will do the process. Whereas the schedule, you cannot give it to other system. They cannot send or they cannot do. This is managed on OIC only. Once you build the integration, you schedule it. And based on the schedule, it runs, or you can manually submit it. Once you click on submit now, it will start running into integration. So, so para parameter is like an input variable, like could be XML, you know, schema, or you know, whatever is expecting the web service, correct? Right? Same. Uh, let's take that event-based integration itself. Now, Oracle is going to trigger an integration. Oracle Fusion ERP, sorry. So the Fusion is going to, once the order is created, it's going to trigger the integration. Now, to trigger that integration, it needs to send that order details to. It cannot simply trigger the integration, right? So it needs to send that order details to, to this integration. Now, this integration will get triggered by that, and it needs to receive that payload. To receive that, the input will be the output of that event. So once we are starting with the app driven integration, the first step is it will get triggered with the parameters what the Oracle is going to send. As soon as the order is created, Oracle will trigger this integration with the payload and this what are the set of operations inside this it will continue to do. Maybe based on the received payload, create a file and then send it to different system or do some manipulations in the database and show it in a page. Those all things can be done by app driven. Well, we see an example of each of these or the ones that you're going to show, it will be more clear. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, once we have a lab session, it will be very much clear. Because it's making sense, just not making the whole picture. So that's what. 
Yes, yes. So actually, uh, even when we, if you work, if you have worked on this SOA, you will be having a knowledge like I integration, synchronous, asynchronous. So yes, those are the terminologies it usually comes up. Whereas here, they just return these two. The only two available here. One is and that with parameters. Whereas in SOVA, you can create an integration with parameters or without parameters, just one flow. You just define at the start point. Only that start point is the difference between these two. And it, it can be triggered from a different system, legacy systems or third party systems. Whereas this, it will be scheduled. That's it. Clear? And we'll do example of all the six? Yes. We'll do all these first three and not the below three. Below three is like we use very less. This pubs okay. to ICS and subscribe to ICS are like uh, messaging services, we can say. So that when an integration is failed or something, your message should not be lost. So they go for this pub to ICS and subscribe to ICS for this messaging. But we won't be using this much for a real time integrations anywhere. So we'll be discussing much. We'll see this in like one liner, but not in detail. Okay, and what is file transfer then? So file transfer is especially like if you want to build just a file transfer system. Like if you know MFT, what does it do? You can just transfer from file from one system to other system. Just like that, you create a system where you just transfer the files. Of course, you can do perform the set of operations inside this too, but the main agenda of this is to just transfer files from one system to the system. Like say. There are Fusion has their own server. They procure like FTP server. Now Oracle BAP we scheduled it and will receive the file. Okay, and from this file you need to send this file to a different system, which is a client network or EBS system or SAP system. They have a different F F FTP server. So to transfer this file, only we use this. Of course, even this operation we can do it in the schedule also. You can just write a FTP adapter here and it will schedule it and it keeps on doing it. But it's just an extra option they have provided for file transfers. So yeah, I have a question in this file transfer. Yeah. While you're telling, right? You said like both the Oracle here, like the Fusion is a different login and uh, this is a different login. While do we are doing the file transfer, we want to gen generally we will archive the files, right? Whatever we yeah. send out and whatever we come. In which system we will store? In the OEC we will store or in the Fusion we will store generally? Fusion we won't be storing anything. Uh -huh. Only Fusion will get data, we will send data. That's it. We can't store anything there. Of okay. course, there is UCM is a temporary, but we cannot store files there. For this system, uh, the architecture is a bit different. Okay, OEC has its internal storage, which we cannot access. Even for files, uh, some stage operations. We'll, we'll see in detail once we go into integration. But just imagine the OIC is like bounded. We don't have access inside it. Only thing is we can use these options and we can build. Now, to have but a file transfer system. Create, but, but can you create like a staging tables, temporary tables, and all those where you can? No. Yeah, nothing. No. You can't do that also? No, okay. we can't do. Only thing is you if you build an integration. In Fusion, nothing is there. In, if especially SaaS. Because I've just started working in Fusion for the last one year. In Fusion, we only have front end, we only have integration. You, there is no, there is a database, but we are not exposed to that. So it's all configuration, FBDI, and integration. Right. I'm learning right. right now. Right, right. So I understand, like you know, the ERP side, the cloud side. We we yes. uh, today that is the that is the challenge we are facing. There is no way. Um, uh, like no uh, data, like, you know, create, no create data. anything, right? I was no. thinking like since this is more of a middleware, I thought like uh, here you will have a, some kind of facility to create some temporary table so that you can track some error messages. Yeah, that is that's what I was you know, uh, you know that is the reason we are going for BizTalk uh, integration with ICS today, where in BizTalk you can do all this, but the challenge is. We have here like a fusion of ERP side, which is sending from ICS. We are sending to uh, like uh, another and then to BizTalk. That's like three layers. 
and uh, going back and forth like you know some things are taking like uh, 15 20 minutes um feedback you know and still we are having challenges in tracking all these messages between three systems so so that's what i was more interested in how we are tracking those messages between those um and um, how we are monitoring it and all that so so hopefully some of those things will be clear going forward after this training <laughs> to answer that here you can build one system on OCI where you have yeah. this OIC on OIC you don't have any access you cannot uh, access their internal database or you cannot access their file server so additionally you need to procure a FTP server you can procure a VM virtual machine and you can use it as a FTP server or you can procure MFT manage file transfer with additional options on Oracle like you can schedule the file transfer jobs on MFT itself and database database cloud and database classic these are the two things which Oracle gives you need to procure it once you procure them you need to create the connection if you see this particular connection you will create this connection to interact with that system once the connection is created now from the OIC once you read the file, if you want to insert into table, invoke this connection and insert into that table. So everything you can manage it here. But it's okay. not in OIC. You need to procure them separately and you need to configure them here. Okay. Okay, yeah. Like coming to the file transfer, right? You yes. you told that we have the VIP reports and everything, right? Generally that's yes. the way we will do the transfer. I have the VAP report in the cloud. Yes. And I have this uh, like OAC which is transferring this VAP report from Oracle cloud to another like external system. So if I want to archive this file, where I will archive? Because you are telling I cannot have both. So I need to buy an FTP location and uh, I need to put that archived files there so that I can by future reference it. Exactly. You need to get the FTP server. You need to place it there. Oh, okay. You need to buy it separately. Okay. We will see that on day seven. Like, how do we procure them? How Oracle provides? Or if you want, we can take you there. But now, uh, let's proceed with all the theoretical part. We'll complete all these discussions, yeah, and sure, then sure. in the later classes, you will understand what exactly we do there. How we procure them and how we create the connection to link that system and how the file archival happens there or how we create a system to archive the files this all we'll see in the later sessions on the labs okay yeah so these are the brief descriptions about that app driven integrations scheduled integrations which we talked just now file transfer routing so these three basic routing published to OIC, subscribe to OIC we are not going to use much or I, I say like we never used it but thing is that in we have an extra feature like if your messages should not be lost or messaging service is down and you don't want to lose that messages you can use these services but it's very minimal you can just either you can ignore them kind of but still we will build an integration and we will see how they work Okay. So we, we clear on this.